And that was a perfect introduction for our next speaker, Mr. Ian Urbina. So my name is Ian Urbina. I'm a reporter with the New York Times. Um, in my allotted six minutes, uh, I was going to try to answer three basic questions. One was, uh, what was this series that we ran and is still ongoing, The Outlaw Ocean, about? Um, the second question was, uh, what were sort of some of the high altitude big thoughts that emerged from the reporting? And then the third question was, um, where might there be sort of rays of hope um, for fixes to some of these problems? Um, the series uh, set out to explore that space that is two thirds of the planet and in many ways is in many places ungoverned and ungovernable. Uh, and more specifically, it set out to um, broaden the diversity of understanding about the types of illegality that exists out there. So apart from just uh, um, you know the Captain Phillips Somali piracy type story, um, intentional dumping or um, illegal fishing even, we wanted to explore the broader range of crimes. Um, in the end, or thus far, uh, that spectrum looks like um, the murder of stowaways uh, where stowaways are found and set on the raft far off from shore, cut loose and left to die. Um, a fairly organized realm of gun trafficking uh, and privatized maritime security um, floating armories that exist out there, usually on the line between national and international waters largely unregulated, uh, sometimes quite violent. Um, intentional dumping on an order that shocked us. Um, you know, every three years, ships dump in the oceans, more oil and sludge than the Exxon Valdez and the BP spill combined. Um, uh, obviously illegal and overfishing, um, uh, and a variety of other crimes. Um, so it was a real eye-opener as to man's inhumanity to man um, uh, that occurs offshore. Um, some of the bigger sort of uh, meta thoughts that emerged. One for me was um, something I still struggle with, and that is the definition of IUU, illegal, unregulated, un unreported uh, fishing. Um, what emerged as a tough um, thought experiment for us was what really constitutes illegal fishing, and more specifically, uh, as we, the globe, and nations in particular, and the consumer, uh, attempt to grapple with uh, better policing against illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, does that def definition include the plight of those who work out there? Um, so do the fishers matter as much as the fish? And by that I mean um, questions that might uh, cross the threshold of illegality uh, that would include the fishers, the fishermen and women. Um, are they documented? Are they trafficked via debt bondage? Um, did all of them show back up at port? Did some disappear en route? Um, were they beaten uh, on the ship?
international waters, uh, the lesser known Wild West when it comes to arms, dealing, illegal fishing and slavery, and much, much more. Investigative journalist Ian Ubina has sailed the seven seas for the last 15 months on a mission to uncover lawlessness on the water, and he joins us now. Fascinating stuff, Ian. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. Um, tell me, what have you been doing for the last two years? I've been getting a lot of very dirty and dangerous boats, um, sort of trying to lay out the diversity of crime that occurs out there. So what did you see? What are some of the worst things you saw? Um, murder caught on camera, um, abuse of stowaways, uh, intentional dumping of oil at sea, you know, on the order of more than the BP spill, um, uh, you know, and every year more oil is spilled, is dumped, um, arms dealing, sea slavery, human trafficking. Can I go back to the murder? Mm. What happened? Where were you? So I actually was not on the ship where I, the murder occurred. I was given uh, footage of, of this murder that was filmed on a cell phone camera, um, and it was unclear as to where that occurred. Um, but uh, we investigated it, and it turned out it was in the Indian Ocean. And on the footage, it was 10 minutes, 26 seconds, sort of slow motion slaughter. Um, two men with semi-automatic weapons on one ship essentially picked off these guys in the water who were attempting to flee. And ultimately, it looks like um, this was a clash between fishing boats that ended quite violently. Um, and to this day, no government has been willing to investigate. Um, it looks like these were Taiwanese uh, tuna oil workers. And this is the problem, isn't it? Because when, you, when you're out in these international waters, they're, they're not police officers. That's right. Yeah, there are laws in the books, but no one to enforce them. And so, um, you know, it's... Uh, so why did, why did you start this? What did you want to do? I kind of want to explore, um, you know, I think when you mention laws, as it seems, there's people who can...
down from Hobart, Australia, down to what is the most remote area of water in the world. It's two weeks sailing to the northeast is Perth, Australia. Two weeks sailing to the northwest is Cape Town, South Africa. There is no place in this world that is further removed from civilization.
Mark my words. If one of those fucking dinghies comes alongside either one of those Scottish boats tonight, or tomorrow morning, the one of your guys is going to be severely fucking hurt. Now you're roaring. There's no fucking way that we have ceased this bar fishing for the big this four boats has got here because of you and your fucking lazy no good fucks.
I'm sure some other people stay. Some people go in a tavern, no tavern, in a bar, buy beer, drink. It's too much people. Because it's too much blood. See, my life is not like the same people living. This is hard living, maybe. Must change. Because yeah, the human being not live like this. Because it's part of life, that's why I live like this. I believe one day when I change, she going to change my life if I take shit. Seven tickets, lot of yeah, lucky number. Football.
systems, anything happening, if we were to be the target, the guards will take care of that and we leave them to it. Okay, they won't be the ones coming looking for you to rescue you. They will take care of the, uh, the incident. We'll deal with it. Um, we most likely, once we've deemed it, safe. <laughs> if for any reason we're unable to get out of the front, there's an emergency exit in the rear that we um, behind the HESCO barriers Uh, but uh, I do think there is hope. Uh, and so in my final 30 seconds, I'll say, um, I think in terms of hope, uh, the buyers, uh, be they government um, or others, all the way down to consumers, asking more questions about uh, both the conditions below deck and on deck um, is probably where we might see the most uh, change coming on these issues. Thank you. Thanks very much for that, Ian. You uh, remind me of a quote I heard, and that's, leaders need to be brokers of hope, and they can never appear to be bankrupt. So I think you've definitely inspired us to that.